In 1894, a little boy was born in an ordinary courtyard dwelling near Beijing's Tiananmen Gate. When this moody and introverted child was eight years old, he started to study acting with his uncle and various teachers. He made his stage debut at the age of 11, and by the time he was 20, there wasn't a single theater goer in China who did not know his name. Over the next 40 years, this person revolutionized every aspect of China's dramatic tradition, from acting, music, and dance to makeup and costumes, with his portrayals of Chinese women from all walks of life. The memorable characters he created included imperial concubines, impoverished daughters of the people, celestial goddesses. And heroic women generals. He made numerous trips around the world, captivating audiences in Japan, America, and Russia with his exquisite performance and original technique, and received an honorary doctorate from Pomona College in the United States. The school of acting that he originated and developed was hailed as a merging of the three great stage methods of Stanislavski, Brecht. And traditional Chinese drama. He spent his life portraying women, and took a woman stage name. Through him, the whole world came to know the dramatic art of China. His name was Mei Lanfang, and the art he devoted his life to was Beijing opera. Hello, my name is Ursula Feichtinger. Mei Lanfang and his art have always held a deep fascination for me. It was this interest that inspired me to study Beijing opera. The people of China have always considered Beijing opera to be a symbol of Chinese culture. It is a dramatic art form that gives them the opportunity to revive the spectacle of their historical tradition time and again. It not only epitomizes the culture and lifestyle of classical China, but also gives a vivid and unforgettable expression of the philosophy, aesthetics, and ethics of the Chinese people. Do you want to understand the people of China? Then first learn to appreciate Beijing opera. To explore the roots of Beijing opera, we should start with one of the most famous rulers of classical China, Emperor Qianlong. This is the Forbidden City, home to China's emperors. The year is 1790. Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty has been on the throne for 55 years, and preparations for his birthday celebration are once more underway in the palace. As part of the festivities, a number of officials from southern China have arranged to bring their local theater troops to Beijing to perform for the emperor. The 80-year-old sovereign is delighted with the production, and a number of the companies take advantage of his favor to settle in Beijing. What follows is an extended, free-wheeling artistic exchange among performers from all over China. Through a process of joint experimentation and give and take, a new art form gradually evolves in the theaters of Beijing, beloved of all from the emperor to the common people. What we know today as Beijing Opera. There's very little group singing in Beijing opera, so the performers' solo vocal characteristics are especially important and central to determining which roles they play. Depending on their voices, men can play women and women can play men. 
makeup and costuming make sure that they look the part. Can you tell this is me? This is me too. It's still me. Who do you think this is? That's right, it's still me. The four types of makeup that I just showed you represent the four principal roles of Beijing Opera. Each role has a standard gender, personality, age and social status. When Beijing Opera characters come on stage, the audience can immediately tell from their makeup which role they are playing. The four types of Beijing Opera characters are Sheng, the male rose, Dan, the female rose, Jing, the painted face characters, and Chou, clowns. Sheng, the male roles include old man, young man, and martial man. Old men known as Lao Sheng are serious and dignified models of integrity and fortitude. All of the male roles use false whiskers, the color of which indicates the character's age. Black whiskers signify a man in the prime of life. This white whiskered old gent has probably already passed his 60th birthday. The elder male role emphasizes superior vocal technique and skillful acting. These characters generally sing in the natural vocal range and appear both forceful and serious. Another type of male role is the xiaosheng or young man. These characters combine the natural and falsetto ranges to create bright and vibrant vocals and express their dashing and sophisticated personalities through proficient acting. The martial male role, or Wu Sheng, depicts man in the prime of life, highly adept in the martial arts. These characters rely on their acrobatic fighting skills to portray martial prowess. The martial male role does not emphasize singing, but rather requires skillful execution of difficult fighting techniques. The various female roles in Beijing opera are known as Dan. Daughters of prominent families or women of strong character are called Zheng Dan, virtuous women. These characters are also known as blue robe women, after the long sleeved dark blue robes they traditionally wear. The virtuous woman role emphasizes vocal performance characterized by beautiful, melodic arias and a reserved and elegant acting style. China's most famous master of Beijing opera Mei Lanfang gained his worldwide reputation with his portrayals of virtuous woman characters.
The Hua Dan or engineer role depicts vivacious young women, innocent and playful, or bold and seductive. These characters are often servants or daughters of common families. The engineer role emphasizes gesture and spoken dialogue. The Lao Dan role portrays elder women. These characters often employ a slow, stylized gait, with the toes pointing outward to indicate old age. The elder woman role emphasizes singing and employs the natural vocal range. The Wu Dan role depicts martial women. These women knights are also known as Dao Ma Dan, or horse and sword women. Like the male martial characters, martial women emphasize a high level of acrobatic fighting skill and wear the military costume called Kao. Martial women characters include winning generals and champions. As well as goddesses and demons, these warrior women spring into action, accompanied by the clash of drums and gongs, as the din and smoke of battle fill the stage. Is required reading for students of Beijing Opera. It's the basic work on facial makeup in Beijing Opera. The Jing or painted face role includes many different characters, each of which has its own standardized makeup. Actors who play the painted face role not only have to memorize each character's makeup, they also have to be able to reproduce them all on their own faces. It's a good thing I decided to be a horse and sword woman and not a painted face character. The Jing or painted face roles are the most distinctive characters in Beijing opera. The painted face role depicts rugged, heroic men, both handsome and charismatic, such as generals, celestial beings, or high-ranking officials. These characters use the natural vocal range and a simple, forceful singing style. Why is he painting his nose white? Oh, it's you! Don't be fooled by his makeup. He isn't a painted face character. He's a clown. There is some similarity in the makeup of these two characters, but their acting style is completely different. Clowns are exaggerated, like cartoons. They are the buffoons and comedians of Beijing Opera. There are two types of clowns: Wenchou, talking clowns, and Wuchou, fighting clowns. <laughs> fighting clowns portray characters with razor-sharp wit and outstanding acrobatic fighting skills. Such as Lü Lin, the hero of the Greenwood, and Xia Dao, the noble robber. Ding, 
talking clowns may be playboys, jailers, bartenders, night watchmen, or veterans. Clowns come in all types. They can be funny or aggressive, good or evil, common or noble. They are not all bad guys. The four primary roles of Beijing opera, male and female characters, painted faces, and clowns, have evolved over more than a hundred years. More than any other type of theater, Beijing opera standardizes its character types and externalizes their inner natures. Traditional Chinese landscape painting uses bold lines and expressive brushwork to portray its subjects. Its subtle depths leave ample room for the viewer's imagination to run free. Beijing opera resembles this type of painting in many ways. Although Beijing opera is derived from real life, it does not apply the standards of realism to the stage. Rather, it fictionalizes and stylizes the actions of real life, transfiguring them to create a more beautiful world. Here you can see how an unfurled orchid is imitated to express the grace and beauty of a woman's hand. This is called the orchid gesture. Traditional Chinese doors consist of two halves, which bolt in the middle. The gesture used on stage to evoke opening a door is derived from the structure of real life. Feeding chickens is one of the daily chores performed by Chinese farm women. This real-life action is transformed and beautified on the Beijing Opera stage. This is what mending clothes looks like in real life. Here, the action is stylized into the piercing needle pulling thread of Beijing Opera. This is a common scene in the Chinese countryside. How is it recreated on stage?
The stage is empty. Using no more than their explicit gestures, these two actors vividly portray rowing a boat, tying it up and getting in and out. With only a stick to represent an oar, they convince us of the existence of both water and boat. In opera, the empty stage encompasses the entire world. With no limits on time or space, the story becomes a mutual creation of the performance of the actors and the imagination of the audience. Not only gesture and acting in Beijing opera are highly stylized, the settings and props are also mostly imaginary. This tasseled staff, the color of a horse, represents a horse whip. In the actor's hand, the whip evokes a galloping steed. When the actor circles the stage brandishing a whip, we know a long journey is in progress. Water is represented by banners. The actors leap about trailing billowing blue banners and mountainous waves crash and cover the earth. A banner emblazoned with a wheel shows that the character has arrived by wagon. Four soldiers are arrayed behind each of these armored characters. This signifies two generals meeting in battle, each at the head of a huge army. representative examples of Beijing opera is the fork in the road. At first glance, this play may seem a little like Western mime. Actually, it's even better. Not only does it tell a story, it transports the audience into the heart of the story's world as well. The plot goes like this. The hero stops for the night at the crossroads inn. The innkeeper thinks he's a villain and decides to kick him out in the middle of the night. Let's take a look at this classic midnight fight scene.
example, the stage is ablaze with light, the actor's brilliant use of gesture makes you believe it's too dark to see your hand in front of your face. This is the magic of Beijing Opera. Characters in Beijing Opera come in four types. Male roles, female roles, painted faces and clowns. Acting is also divided into four categories. Singing, spoken parts, gesture and fighting. We've just seen examples of gesture and fighting. Now let's look at singing and spoken parts. Spoken parts in Beijing Opera utilize two styles, verse and Beijing dialect, to differentiate characters' social status and temperament. People from the upper classes generally speak in verse, while commoners use Beijing dialect. Parts spoken in verse have a musical, rhythmic quality like poetry. Parts spoken in Beijing dialect, which is derived from everyday speech, are much more colloquial. Regardless of which style is used, flawless pronunciation and dramatic expressiveness are essential. Singing in Beijing opera, whether by male or female characters, requires clear articulation and forceful projection. Each syllable must be crystal clear and pleasing to the air. Chinese martial arts and acrobatics have had a major influence on the fighting style used in Beijing opera. Over the last hundred years, Beijing opera martial arts technique has been refined to a razor-sharp edge. Acrobatic fighting movements are derived from real life. Whooping hawk reproduces the beauty of a hawk in flight. Kicking heaven imitates a kicking golden pheasant. Leaping tiger is inspired by the pouncing of a tiger. Black dragon coiled around post evokes the writhing of a dragon. Fashion makeup is very important in Beijing opera. Its influence can be seen in other Chinese art forms as well. Let's take a look at the actual process of creating the fashion makeup of Beijing opera. Rural Beijing opera audiences used to be so large that people in the back couldn't see the actors' faces. The standardized facial makeup of Beijing Opera was developed to solve this problem, exaggerating the characters' features so that even people in the back rows could clearly see the actors' expression.
Every Beijing opera role, both male and female, uses wigs as well as facial makeup. Female characters also attach long wisps of hair in front of their ears to outline and beautify their faces. The actor's face is like a blank piece of paper. Each feature is applied one stroke at a time until the actor's own face disappears behind that of the character. Beijing opera facial makeup follows strict rules. Traditional Chinese ideas about color are particularly important. A clear white complexion, jet black eyes and raven hair and a ruby red mouth represent the fundamental Chinese standard of beauty. Each color has special significance. Red symbolizes loyalty. White indicates duplicity. Black means strict impartiality. Yellow is wisdom. Blue is power. And gold indicates celestial beings and ghosts. Makeup emphasizes and exaggerates the eyes, eyebrows, nose, and even the shape of the face. This is so all the people in the back rows can clearly see the faces of the characters. You can tell that this crafty character is up to no good. His white face and narrow eyes reveal that he's always hatching plots. He is Cao Cao, known in Beijing opera as a scheming prime minister who attempts to usurp the throne. This is the famous judge Bao Qingtian. He staunchly upholds the law, placing righteousness above personal loyalty. He's impartial, incorruptible, upright, and outspoken, so his facial makeup is red and black. The crescent moon on his forehead indicates that he's willing to pass through the gates of hell to uncover the truth of a case. Characters with red facial makeup, which indicates loyalty, are beloved of Chinese audiences. This Chinese general, Guan Gong, has won many battles and would rather die than surrender to the enemy. His name has become synonymous with loyalty. This mischievous and lovable monkey face looks like he must have stepped right out of a fairy tale. Costumes in Beijing Opera, like fashion makeup, are specially designed for each role, kind of like variable body makeup. Whatever your character is, that's the costume you wear. There's no room for personal preference or improvisation. That's expressed in the old Beijing opera saying, better a costume that's worn out than the wrong one. Dragons and phoenixes are revered and loved in China. They represent power and good fortune, so they often appear as part of the costumes of royal characters in Beijing opera. He's dressed up as the emperor, I'm the empress. The costumes used in Beijing opera are based on clothes from China's Ming dynasty. Costumes indicate the nationality, temperament, and social status of each character and follow strict rules concerning design, pattern, material, and color. Martial characters and generals wear a type of military attire called kao, adapted from the armor worn by knights in ancient China. Military characters also carry four pennants on their backs. These are based on the tokens of military authority used in ancient China and indicate that these characters are under official orders. Helmets and boots are also part of the costumes. 
do I seem taller than before? Check out my boots. These thick soled boots are specially made for actors who play male roles and painted face characters so they can look taller on the stage. They are not so easy to use, though. You can see how hard it is for me to walk with them on. The music of Beijing opera employs two distinctive melodic styles called Erhuang and Xipi to accompany and accent the lyrics being sung. Lyrics are generally written in rhyming couplets and are deeply influenced by classical Chinese poetry. Lyrics and melody combine to create a powerful artistic appeal. Erhuang style melodies are calm and stately. They are often used to express deep emotion. CP style melodies are lively and bright. They usually express a cheerful, energetic mood. The Beijing Opera Orchestra consists of a percussion section and a wind and string section which may play separately or together. The small drum player leads the entire orchestra and controls the rhythm of the action on stage. The percussion section also includes the large gong, cymbals, small gong and large drum. The most important instrument in the wind and string section is the jinghu. This high-pitched fiddle made of bamboo, snakeskin, and horsehair is the soul of the orchestra and is lead instrument. The jinghu player is the actor's closest collaborator, responsible both for carrying the melodic line and complementing the mood on stage. Many famous actors have their own personal jinghu players. The wind and string section also includes the arhu, the yueqin, the sanxian, the ruan, and the pipa, as well as the bamboo flute, the sona, and the sheng. The stories of Beijing Opera come primarily from classical Chinese history and folk legends. The traditional repertoire includes more than 1,300 librettos. About 300 of these are commonly performed today. According to Chinese aesthetics, by the end of the play, good and evil should receive their just rewards, and everyone should live happily ever after. Even tragedies are expected to have a happy ending, otherwise, the audience won't be satisfied. That's quite different from the Western theatre tradition. There are several genres of Beijing opera named after the famous actors who originated them. These include the Mei Lanfang, Ma Lianliang, and Qi Lin Tong schools of Beijing opera.
Beijing opera performers generally start training when they are six or seven years old. It will be many years before they have their time in the limelight. Many specialized opera schools have been established in China, offering courses from the primary to graduate levels. Along with social progress and modernization, have come a multitude of new recreational opportunities. Like traditional forms of theater in the West, Beijing opera must find new ways to develop and survive. Today, high priority is being given to training a new generation of performers and preserving the traditional repertoire of this unique art form. It is clear that Beijing Opera is not only the national pride of China, but a priceless legacy of all the peoples of the world. I'm sure that by now you've all become dedicated Beijing Opera buffs. So, I'll see you tonight at the theater.